My name is Victor Marks. I was born um, in the 60s in Louisiana, um, down by the swamp. Father was a drug dealer and a pimp. My dad never really claimed me. Uh, as a child, he thought I was somebody else's. And uh, so it was kind of a weird place to be in where my biological dad didn't claim me. And, and uh, my mother at times probably had what they call attachment issues because I was a reminder of him. Uh, so it, yeah, it, it put a kid in a, uh, in many ways, a, a lonely place. Uh, my mother would end up marrying six times. And uh, I attended 14 different schools and lived in uh, 17 different houses uh, as a kid growing up. I had a stepfather who was sadistic, was abusive. Dunked in a tub till I passed out, pulled out a pistol. He pulled the hammer back and he would pop it to the side of my head. Bad things happen. A fella came up and said, I want to show you something. And he brought me into this commercial uh, building, small, but it's where they separated the eggs from the chickens. And um, when we went in that building, he turned and locked the door. And he was a child molester. And, uh, he knew I was gonna, wouldn't be quiet so about it all. So he, he tried to kill me by shoving me in a commercial cooler. And he left me there. Uh, when I was five years old. Uh, my family looked for me in the woods and down by the pond. They, they thought, you know, where's Victor at? And then when they went to that building, they checked the cooler just to see. And I was in there, I'd passed out from it being so cold. And they rushed me up to the house. Um, uh, Cause you know, when you're poor, they don't send you to the hospital for much. And they actually wrapped me in a blanket and put me on a porch and like aiming toward the sun and said, well, he got to thaw out. <laughs> so, uh, but when I did thaw out and was able to tell them what had happened, they went and found the guy and they beat him inside of his house. Uh, then they drug him behind a tractor uh, in my mamaw's uh, field behind her house. And then they threw a rope over a limb and this, a big pecan tree and they made a noose and they hung him. And I mean, they didn't want to kill him, they just wanted to scare him. And uh, I, I guess the term conflict resolution hadn't been developed yet. But yet my stepfather was abusive and crazy uh, at that time. But I thought he was my real dad. You know, that's what's, that's the crazy part. I thought the guy who was abusing me and terrorizing our family and all that, I thought he was my real dad. So talk about get imprinted, and then later to find out, because he had adopted us. My biological dad, who we had never really connected, uh, the last time I'd heard of him, he was a practicing warlock, actually. But he sent me a letter, and I still have the letter. It's a letter that changed my life. Um, it's when he accepted responsibility as a dad and stepped back into my world, um, because we were never raised together. But he basically was a I mean, he was apologizing for not being there. And he said, I know you think I'm crazy. Uh, I did. <laughs> he said, I've given my life to Christ. And I was blown away. I went, what? And I really thought, what's the angle with this? But he said, come visit me. I flew down back home and uh, went to visit him. And, and there was a change. There was a significant change. There was something different about him. I thought, how can this be? And, uh, and then he invited me to go to church. I felt such a uh, conviction in my heart. Uh, and it wasn't a brutal conviction, it was just sincere. It was me seeing that I needed God in my life. And even my, you know, thinking I was a Christian, uh, you know, uh, I wasn't. I was a proud guy, didn't like to go to church. Uh, church kind of represented, you know, wimpiness for me. But yet my dad had invited some of his fighters because he, he trained fighters. Um, and uh, well, these guys were singing to God and it blew me away. I, I thought, man, these are, these are no lightweights. These are knuckle draggers and they're worshiping God. And conviction came on my life at that moment. I, Cause I thought I was a Christian, you know, I mean, aren't we, most of us are. No, 
I felt the conviction of God hit me at that point. And I realized I was, uh, it's not a popular term these days, but it's the truth. I was a sinner. I'd missed the mark of God's perfection regarding those Ten Commandments. And I was pretty darn guilty. And I, I wanted, I mean, what they were talking about is you can be forgiven. And, and I wanted that. I wanted a, what they called a new start by being born again. And when I felt that, that conviction, at the same time, I gotta tell you, I felt God's love. And it seemed like a paradox. How, how can I feel so bad about my own sin and at the same time feel God's love? It, uh, it broke me. And sitting there in the back of that church, I was on the, like the back row. Uh, uh, my eyes, start, I tell people, my eyes started leaking. I fell down and just begged God to forgive me. And then uh, I couldn't understand why he loved me. It was the first time in my life that I, um, that I stopped blaming other people for my own problems. Because I had plenty to blame. But it's, it's the day I feel like I became a man because I took responsibility for my own stuff. And uh, God touched me. And no one can ever take that away from me, ever. It was a real encounter with God. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy how God can weave this whole tapestry together. A lot of times we just see all the frails on the backside, go, no, this makes sense. When God flips it over, you go, wow. Amazing, his redemptive power.